Right. 30 years. And here he is at last, live, ladies and gentlemen, Billy Birmingham. Oh, look at this. I'm so excited. You can imagine, 30 years, this is the closest I've been to Channel 9's cricket coverage, this iconic coverage that has kept me in good stead for 30 years, <laughs> put my kids through school, and now here I am sitting between a couple of mocks. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> a pair not, of mocks. Not just the cricket. I mean, I'm, I'm thinking, of, you know, Ray Warren, Rabs, Daryl East. Oh, I mean, Dad yeah. said on the Fairnickham department, I've had a lot of fun <laughs> with him too, Nico. I'll tell a man that much. But no, listen, this is very exciting. Um, Richie and Bill and uh, poor old Tony, rest his soul. What, 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 what moment? I mean, you're sitting watching the cricket one day on nine. And, I mean, what motivated well, you? Well, the, the, the thing is that what Kerry Packer did for cricket just revolutionised the game and, you know, changed it forever. And it did every form of the game. Every form of the game benefited from what KP did in 77, 78. And I was sitting around, drawn back into the game, like hundreds of thousands of other people, drawn back into the game of cricket, drawn back in by this new coverage with, uh, you know, coloured uniforms and lights and cameras everywhere. And then, of course, that triumvirate of commentators who kick things off. Ah, Benno, whom I was very familiar with, Tub, as a mm -hmm. great Australian captain and, uh, and a player, but I had no idea that he had that kind of voice. And, you know, his bottom lip had a mind of its own. Probably <laughs> still does, actually. <laughs> uh, but he turned side on, and it was like in a different postcode. And, uh, and a, great, uh, but a great reader of the game, and whatever, but just a voice. And then right alongside him, <laughs> got him, yes, go on, oh, Bill. Popped an O-ring every time a wicket fell. And uh, Tony, of course, well, hard and fast, and Glenn McGraw. <laughs> I didn't actually sound very much like him, but as long as I put in lots of those broad vowel South African sounding words, you know, hard and fast, carnage, parked the car, which was one of Tony's personal favourites. He rang me up one day, Tony, he said, oh, look, I've got to do this uh, live performance tonight. Uh, what are some of the expressions I use? <laughs> I thought he was kidding. I said, what do you mean? He said, oh, you know, just a couple of one-liners I can drop. And I just said, well, why don't you say the car park's full and there should be a bit of carnage out there? He said, thanks, that's all I need. Oh, I know, Isn't I know that weird? that Tony well, obviously was a great loss to all of us last yes, year. And he would love so. to have been here today because he was a big fan of yours. I remember sitting in a car with Tony Gregg after a game of golf and he rang you up. Yep. And I think you just bought out Bone, I think it yes. was, the latest one. <laughs> and, and, you, and he said, Billy, we've got to get a copy of that. Yeah. And you sent a couple over to Perth and Greggy and I and all of us grabbed one of those ghetto blasts. <laughs> the ghetto and, blast and, went, and went out the back. And we were, way, we're like a lot of little kids standing around listening to that, listening to your Bone CD. <laughs> Chuckling away like a couple of ten years. But Bill and Tony uh, used to, they used to love it when a 12th man record came out. <clears throat> Tony said, Bill and I would, you know, disappear down the far end of the commentary area and have a bit of a listen to it. And uh, no, Tony was a big 12th man yeah. fan. He got me to do a couple of shows with him, and that was great, standing next to this imposing presence. I mean, eight foot ten or whatever he was. But to be standing next to him, doing the hard and fast, Ben McGraw, <laughs> master the art of fast Mate. bowling and whatever, it was fun. There is no way that we'll get back on immediately. Oh my yeah. God, is that what's. Yeah, that's what we've got. Hail, right Richie. Here. Hail the great man. Hail. <laughs> Amir Sir, <so> hail. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I was going to I tell you what, I was going to ask you about, about those pa Pakistan names, which yes. were gold for you in those oh, days. They were, and I'm thrilled to say that the Pakistani, Indian, and Sri Lankan guys all love them. I remember way back in 1984, Nico, uh, Jeff Lawson said, Gee, look at that man, it's coming down, isn't it? Um, Jeff Lawson said to me that. Uh, the, he, he would walk past the Pakistan, Indian and Sri Lankan dressing rooms and hear 12th man blasting out of there. Yeah. So I was thrilled that they liked it too. I think they just loved the fact that I was taking the mickey out of their mates and indeed taking the mickey out of you guys who commentate on their poor play or their good play or whatever. Was it, was it, all, was it all you? Like Sunil Haviscar? You know? Yeah, yeah. You know, yes, cutting his arm in half. Yeah, Sleazy yeah, wine bars. Yeah. Yes. Half his hand missing. Half his hand. Well, that was a funny one because he, was, he, yeah, he, his he, name was Azim Hafiz. Yeah. And he did actually have three fingers missing. So yeah, yeah. when he bowled, he put his front arm up and he's almost making the devil horns, you know. <laughs> and uh, I called him uh, uh, half his hand missing. Yeah. And uh, I had a lot of fun with the uh, Indian, Pakistani and Sri Lankan names. Good you've fun. Got, listen, you, you've got a, before I forget, you've got a new album out, which is a, it's a, what is it, best of? Yes, it's a best of. It's a biggest hits, and I, I've been led by the fans here. The fans over the years have asked me if I'm ever thinking of doing a, a greatest hits album, and I was going to call it 
12 Man's Biggest Hits, but then the willy-nilly incident happened where I, I created that farcical scene on one of my records back in 1990 of a, a player throwing a sloppy high five and getting his teammate right in the eye. And sure enough, life imitated art in the last couple of weeks when Brad Haddon copped an eyeful from Faulkner. And Warney was in the com box and he said, oh no, he's thrown one of those willy-nilly high fives. <laughs> so I thought, what a great name for the record, willy-nilly, because that's what it is. It's 33 chunks of 12 men coming at you willy-nilly and it's a, it's a different kind of listen, Mark. And will we get something new from you in yes, time? Yes, there's a couple of, there's a couple of uh, bonus tracks on there that you wouldn't have heard. I had a bit of fun back in the days of uh, Willy and Dilly and uh, yes. Gladstone Small. Yeah. In fact, on this record, Gladstone Small had an operation called a givenectomy. <laughs> but uh, it obviously didn't work, but it hasn't affected And there was form. a bit of commentary in England, wasn't there, in a test match, England West Indies, the, the bowlers holding the batsman's willy. Do you remember oh, that one? That's a bit too rude for our well, audience. Well, Sunday Mark. afternoon. I can but, get away with that, but, but you can't. It, <laughs> uh, that, was a very, that was a very famous <laughs> yeah. bit of commentary. Yeah. So you're and not planning a new album per se? It's just look, it just depends. If any of you guys get, a I don't know, voice. a stutter or a lisp or something, if you, can, yeah, if you can work on something... Well, I, can, I couldn't. Do, I did you as I did you as a bit of Austin Powers on Bird because I'm not very good at the English accents. Because what is an English accent? You go 100 yards up the road in England, it's a different, completely different accent. Listen to that thunder. I've got me chewy too, mate. Oh, you got me chewy. Yeah. I could not. Uh, uh, <laughs> Toby Taylor, in the slips. <laughs> <laughs> every time I record Give us a you, quick Tubby, Tubby, go on. Every time, every, Tubby Taylor, he talks in short, sharp grabs. Uh, <laughs> everything's uh, sort of all phrases and words all clumped together. And he's, uh, every time I record him, I chewing gum in my mouth. Tell you how I can do it. <laughs> and uh, look, I think, uh, can I do this one here? And uh, we'll come back here to the cricket in just a few moments. Today's special fan moment brought to you by our friends at BWS. Cut him! Cut him, yes! yes. Oh, Who brilliant. was that? <laughs> and the fan received a gift card from BWS. Remember, always drink responsibly. Yes, and more of a surprise at the gift card <laughs> from BWS. How appropriate that the 12th man should be in a segment sponsored by BWS. <laughs> <laughs> They get, a, uh, they get a nice envelope with some, they a few, few bobbin it. Very nice. Few bobbin That's bad weather out there, isn't it? It's all happening here. The tension, the drama, the buzz, the rain, the hail. Hail? Hail, Richard. Hail, Richie. Hail, hail, hail great man. Amir's a hail. Unless <laughs> well, his name, you idiot. <laughs> hey, yeah, that's his name. Oh, sorry, Richie. Oh, his yeah. names all sound like swear words. Some of them sound like... <laughs> you, 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 you do a mean, Greggy. I don't mind. Well, here we go. Yes, one of the Tuesday. <laughs> the thing is that what Warney's picked up on is the what they call the cadence, which is the melody. You know, Tony would say, "Had he smashed that one right off the meat of the bat? It's going very hard and fast. They can't cut it off." And into the fence it goes. It was that kind of melody of da 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 da. -da. So, so what is it you look for? When, when you're deciding a bloke is to be a subject for you, what, what are you certain well, that, thing, I guess? The thing is, Nick, you and I were talking before about me being a satirist rather than an yeah. impersonator. So I have to try and get the voices close enough that people will happily accept that that's your Richie and that's yeah, your yeah. Bill and that's your Tony. I don't want them holding up scorecards on my accuracy of impersonation. So the voices have got to be good enough to to uh, for you know, people to accept them, but really I just want them to go with the flow of the yeah. stupid story I'm creating. And haven't I created some stupid Sensational, ones? Sensational, mate. It's been warny, fantastic. Warny, warny. <laughs> Shut up, bullet. The bird gets it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, how many? That might be right. So, <laughs> how many of the guys you said you've met, Greggy? Have you met Bill and Chapelli and Rich as well? Um, Richie, I I've got some lovely uh, letters from Richie from the early days on the embossed Benno and Associates letterhead. Uh, dear Billy, many thanks for sending me the LP. That's how far back we go. The LP. Uh, been listening to it in the flat door weekend and uh, some marvellous sequences and some brilliant production. On the negative side, too much swearing for the sake of it and a couple of voices still not right. He reckons I couldn't get my Chapelli voice right or something. But, uh, you know, uh, generally, uh, Richie, I met him at the World Cup in 99 and I'd never met him personally uh, in 16 years. And I was standing in this little ante room about to do an interview with That's uh, Jonathan England. Agnew. In yes, England, in England. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Uh, Jonathan Agnew from the BBC. And I was a bit nervous. And I just heard this, oh, yeah. 
All right. Well, listen, I should be home about seven. OK. I look forward to seeing you then. I thought, that's Richie. Either that or someone doing me. And, uh, and I looked up and there he was. And, and I'd never seen him from the waist down. For 16 years, all I'd seen of Richie was from the waist up. You know, she said, welcome back to the MCG or wherever he was. So I thought, I'm going to have to do this. God, he's put the kids through school. I better say good day. So, so I jumped up and, and I said, Richie, some things you can't put off forever, mate. Billy Birmingham, how are you? And he went, oh, ah, Billy, what a strange place to be seeing you. Uh, and then he was kind of moonwalking away from me while we were talking. <laughs> he had hold of my hand, but we were kind of on the move while he was talking. <laughs> but, um, so there was no awkward little man no, hug? No, there was little no, no, no. There was no <laughs> man hug. What about a high five? <laughs> um, sold well in Eng England, you know. They've sold well. Yes, all yes. The, no, I've, I've got a very big, uh, mainly cult following over there. When I did my little tour in the UK, every man and his dog pulled out a little TDK cassette with handwritten 12 man on it. So the one thing I should have taken on my trip was an invoice book, it would appear, mate. <laughs> what about, uh, what was your favourite, who was your favourite? You know, when you, who did you really get into when well, you I sat loved, there and... I loved Richie because he was the first one, front and centre, back in the early days of uh, World Series cricket. And he used to ride side saddle. Do you remember Richie used to, <laughs> you know, he was sort of side saddle to the... I wasn't too sure why that was. But, you know, they're welcome back to the SCG or the MCG. And it was just, I don't know, I had this penchant, or penchant, of course, as Ray Warren says, <laughs> penchant, for doing silly voices. And I just found myself with my mates in the lounge room doing Richie's voice. And then I started to gravitate to Bill because, let's face it, Bill stuck out like yeah, the proverbial yeah. DBs. Shane Warne, the hero. I love him. I want to buff him. Get him up here. Did you ever and giggle, like, doing something and say, I have to do that again? Yeah, 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 yeah. No, listen, I had, I had good fun. Uh, you know, <laughs> making the records. But the best fun, of course, was other people enjoying it. Yeah. Well, we all loved them. We used to play them in the change rooms. Oh, we used yeah. to sit there and have a beer at the end of the day's play and listen to Billy 12th Man and just absolutely giggle. We well, used to have Billy, Billy. We, we had to have 12th Man parties. We, we Cricket <laughs> lovers in. Like, yeah, yeah. And a group oh, of us would get this. together with a few beers and, 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 and something to eat and, and on would go the tapes. And everybody could do that. We got lucky. Here, look at this. Sunshine. Blue oh, sun. wow. look at this. Oh, that's fabulous. The plan was to take Billy out to the middle. We were going to yes. walk from here. Oh. Um, out to the middle with warning and do a pitch report. Mate, you, how, long, how long are you up here for, for the test match? Yeah, I'm up here for, uh, for tomorrow. I'm doing some promo around Brisbane tomorrow. So, But listen, wouldn't that have been great? Nico just said to me, if it hadn't rained, we were going to go out there to the centre. I was going to get the keys. Uh, nice and flat, not much grass on it. Let me see what uh, with the keys in here. And I was going to get track cam happening, you know, with you Joe know, the we've got, weather wall. <laughs> we've got weather wall back, you know. Do you I know. The wall? I read that the other day that it, in memory of uh, 12 months of uh, Tony passing, you guys were going to bring back the weather wall with the famous player Coming comfort meter. <laughs> the player comfort meter, which I always thought was such a ridiculous <laughs> idea. I mean, how could a short little fat guy like David Boone be as comfortable as a tall, lean fellow like Craig McDonald? <laughs> Don't rationalise it now. You've left yeah. it late to start making sense of everything. Oh, I know, but I mean, I've tried to keep up with Channel Line's ever-changing technology. So I had the uh, scrotometer. <laughs> the scrotometer was here. It is. Let's have a listen. I think we can hear Greggy at work. Can yes, we, I think we you see there. You the humidity is it? Uh... The wind is coming out of the southeast. Just a little gentle breeze there, up yes. to about nine. Yes. The forecast maximum a pretty hot 28. Currently 22. 22. And the how appropriate. Climbing quite hot, quite quickly there on 35. So, the West Ends are going to back. The cracks are opening up. <laughs> love him. No, love him, yeah, mate. Yeah, I, I, I miss him, him a lot. He really he really uh, got the 12th man gag right from the start. You know, he used to he used to say, I just can't work out how we can't get any money out of the boss. You know, <laughs> where's, where's my royalties, he used to say. <laughs> and um, But he uh, he really got the gag. He just said that I think what the, tw the 12th man's success, Tony reckoned, had had elevated uh, the status of not only the coverage but also the individual commentators. I, 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 Gave them a cult following. Version. I think there's a demand, isn't there? There's a demand for a new 12th man, for Billy to come out and do a new 12th man <laughs> on the current crop of commentators. Everyone, well, there's I a demand for it. Well, I guess I need each you voice needs enough uh, more inflection. I mean, you, you 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 need each voice to be very different. Yes, and and when Tony, Bill, and Richie kicked off that, you know, the wide world of sports uh, coverage of cricket back in the late 70s, you couldn't have wished for. Yeah. Three oh, better yeah. voices. Yeah. And Smashing Baby. And Smashing good. Baby, yeah. I know. Slats calls Smash. him Smashing now. That's Smashing his nickname, Baby. Smashing Baby. Go easy. It's, it's not... a bit of a sensitive subject, that. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, just, 
it's not just cricket. We, we touched on this at the beginning. You know, the whole wide world of sports team has yep. encouraged you, let's say. You, yes. we, we mentioned Rabs, but one of my favourites, and I worked with him a few years back, Daryl Eastlake, Kenny Callender. Oh, 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 here we go, the shoes, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, Kenny Callender was just sensational. Every horse on an S's name. Silver Sovereign. Silver Sovereign was one of those horses <laughs> on my records. And there's a trainer in Sydney, I think, and he's got a two-year-old in practice. Called Silver Sovereign. So keep an eye out for that. I can Mick Price, his name is. Mick Price. He sent me a message a couple of weeks ago saying he's got a two-year-old in training called Silver Sovereign. Okay. So keep an eye out for that. Rabs Warren's become one of people's Rabs. favourites. Rabs dead set in the Fair Dinkum department. Oh, crudging tackle. Uh, he's one of those ones where I'm noticing how many people are yelling out rabisms across the road at me uh, these days. I used Nico. to love Daryl East Proper like that. Here we go. Yeah. Oh, oh, here we go. This oh, right. Here he comes up. Oh! <laughs> Chance for me to get my voice right up to the top. Oh, and I can come back down to a normal level. Oh, oh, oh. oh sensational stuff, Jack. Yeah. We're talking about, uh, well, we're talking with Billy. He's got a new album out, Willy Nilly. Do you write, Willy Nilly. Do you write all your own stuff? Yes, I do. Um, and, some notes here. And um, look, there's, uh, Channel 9's history is my history. I should should ask oh, there it is. I should ask for a commission here. Yeah, here Willy we go. Nilly. You're the one who did it, Warnie. <laughs> I'm watching this game, and Warnie's carrying on about. He's thrown one of those willy nilly <laughs> high fives. And of course, that, that whole incident on my record was. Um, <laughs> Pakistani guy threw a high five and got his teammate right in the eye. And Bill's going, oh, well, this is just ridiculous play by Pakistan. They lack the experience to do them properly, the high fives. They're going to go and throwing the willy-nilly. Well, accidents like this are bound to happen. And then, and then Wardy comes in and says, oh, he's thrown one of those willy-nilly high fives. And I was just putting the finishing touches to the record, and I thought, there's Very a good, good name for a greatest hit. It's a beauty. Willy-nilly. <laughs> Where is Bill? How come is, is he is he crook or is he okay or what's happening? What? Bill's taking a bit of time off and is he's he? going to be with us for the Christmas test in Melbourne. He's hanging out a lot with Joycey, his wife. He yes. hasn't been 100 percent, so he's spending time with her. And but so he's he... not done. He's not. Oh, done. that's good. And he'll be in Melbourne, will he? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> It'll all be happening. The tension, the drama, the crowd, the buzz, the atmosphere. Melbourne, Victoria. <laughs> all right, mate. We we'll just just take. A, a, Very good. A, no, we're not going. I'll tell you what we're going to do. Have a short break. When we come back, Heels is going to go out and tell us how conditions are. Oh, goody. Team with us uh, in the box here. That was a good start. It was a marvellous stroke. Oh. Oh. Nearly knocked him over that one. Oh. Peter Siddle actually caused Kevin Peace a lot of hassle. He was all over him a little bit. He tried to be a, take advantage of Nathan Lyon too. Yes, I noticed that uh, Peter Siddle early on. And uh, look, a marvellous catch there. And it was the 12th man. It was like indeed that. the 12th man, the substitute out there. One of our favourite players. <laughs> but uh, no, Peter Siddle's been all over the England batsman, like uh, spots on Grandma all day, and really bowling superbly. Ian Bell, the Shermanator, he looked pretty good for a while. But uh, yep. he used his feet to the part-time league spinner Steve Smith. Pretty well, actually. But uh, Steve Smith couldn't knock him over. He couldn't stay there long enough. Cook played well, didn't he? Even the short stuff that was super aggressive. Yeah. Well, he played it really well. Yeah, so a very aggressive start by Cook and uh, not able to go on with it, they'll think you'll find. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 oh Waddy! <laughs> the hero, get him up here. Wait, wait a minute, then. Here's your moment, right? Got him! Got him! Yes! Oh, the thick outside edge. Tell your story, walking pal. Straight right on top of you. I love them all. I want to buff them. Get them up here. <laughs> Ooh. Just, oh. just missing. Oh, <laughs> Superstar. That's a Superstar. Day four. <laughs> Superstar. Root, not out. That's how we like them. He's been no. a boring route so far. <laughs> yes, <laughs> he has. And he's, and he's, maybe his sisters Anita and Wanda play, and they're pretty good. <laughs> okay, now. Have a quick look at the bowlers. <laughs> yes. There we go. Ryan Harris, a wicket for him. Two for Mitchell Johnson. One there for Peter Siddle. The Australians have bowled very well. Rich, over to you. Yeah. Well, uh, I think there's one thing wrong at the moment, and that is that there's no super shopper. But the good news is that we've got slats and heels out there in the centre for a weather update. Oh, smashing stuff up there, gents, I've got to say. <laughs> now, I'm about 10 metres 
from the pitch on the western side and the water that is lying around here is quite something there are ponds of water there's a super sopper operating it's coming over my way now but uh, well the Julius Marlowe's here are getting a little bit wet <laughs> because there's uh, a good two millimeters of uh, water just lying there no problem about drain drainage at the Gabba it is outstanding it's been relayed but at the moment the problem is um, these ponds of water that are uh, scattered for about five metres around. But uh, as I say, we're about 10 metres from the pitch and this is important water that they have to get rid of. So part of it will drain. The super sopper heels will be doing a lot of work as well. How does it look over there? Yeah, it looks similar, although the first job, the super sopper, or that mini super sopper, the big super sopper is about to come out. Kevin Mitchell's never used it, never needed it. But the first thing they did was get to the bowler's marks. These, these bowler's foot marks, which are going to play a, a big part in whether we come back on or not. I guess we're lucky that it's Australia. They'll probably play in anything, but there's a lot of moisture gathered around those holes. This whole field has been relayed, so they're very confident in the investment they've made here that it will drain in time to start surprisingly quickly. No, so there's not a whole lot of surface water left in these these run-ups, but uh, they're still working on it. You can see the difference as well, and you can see from up the top the difference of where the covers came off and uh, and where the covers weren't. You can see splashy water there as you walk up to the, the wicket square where the covers uh, were very dry. So the last few steps and delivery strides of the bowlers are all good. Um, about 15 mils. Uh, and or 20, 15 to 20 mils we think was dumped on the Gabba and that's a similar amount to last night. So twice in one day this Gabba has been able to cope or has needed to cope with that much rain in a short sharp outburst. So uh, all good out here, very hot again, it's got a bite into it, the humidity is going to be back. We'll take a break. Just enjoying some support. Gets himself right in the firing line down a fine leg. I love you, Brisbane. And the crowd are loving it. You look at all the smiles in the background there. They're enjoying it. As you do here. Sign your bat. <laughs> like just from on it. He doesn't want the autograph. <laughs> uh, the KP might have been going for his beer. That's what he might have been doing. 